Quick recap, last year we started building our DIY solar heater system and we were using water as the transfer mechanism but as winter came on I was a bit concerned that that would freeze and we might get ice inside the system which might crack the pipes so decided to switch over to air. So we've grabbed ourselves some DC fans, the intent to basically be to build a box, stick the fans inside the box in series and then drive air through the heat exchanger, the intent being to basically heat the air and bring warm air back through the pipe and into the garage. Like all sorts of engineering you always start out thinking that big is probably better. So in this clip I've sped up basically a smoke match that we put inside the fan box. So here you can see the smoke being pulled into the system. And then we have to wait quite a long time actually. And in this time lapse video effectively it's around about a minute before we start to see a level of smoke trickling back through the system on the left hand side. So as you look at that yellow hose connector on the left there is a tiny, tiny amount of smoke being pushed through. So the big fan box actually was pretty rubbish, so we went the other way, got a much smaller fan box with a number of smaller fans to repeat the experiment to see if that would be any better. So somewhat contrary to expectation, the smaller fan box works much better than the big fan box, so again sped up the time lapse here, and effectively smoke gets sucked in, gets pushed through and you can see a much stronger stream of smoke coming through, which is pretty good news. So let's test it, see what happens. So I do love a good graph and this is a graph of a number of days in April and what we're looking at here is the ambient air temperature of the air that we're putting into the solar array versus the air temperature that's coming out of the solar array and then the difference between the two and you can effectively see that nominally we're getting around about a 5 to 6 degree centigrade lift through the solar array. So if I look at the 20th of April which is one of the great days let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. So now we're looking at the 20th of April, 24 hours from basically midnight to midnight. So this was a pretty sunny day, sun came up just after 7 o'clock and actually it went down pretty late in the afternoon but the way that we've got the array angled we're picking up a lot of the sun basically through the morning, through the middle of the afternoon and then things tail off. So you can see pretty much that the system basically flattens out in terms of differential for a good chunk of the day. So let's recap. We've built our little fan box and to be honest they're disappointing, we're not getting a lot of volume pushed through the system and as a result of that we're only getting 5 centigrade in terms of uplift. This system isn't going to win any prizes so I think the next step is to go back to water. Last time we used water we just let the system thermosiphon, this time around we're going to use a 12 volt DC pump. It's a two wire pump, red and black, red being positive, black being negative, it's pretty straightforward. In addition to connecting the electricity, we have to connect the water. So it's standard fittings on these things. We've got some old hose connectors and stuff lying around and the adapters that you get to go between your tap and those sort of nominal hose lock connectors basically just seem to screw on pretty straightforward. There were some pictures on the internet and by all accounts I had some of them lying around so they just screw straight onto the end of the pump. No problem at all. So we've robbed these um, connectors off of the fan box and then literally it's just a question of spinning them on, dead simple. This looks like it's going to be pretty effective so let's get it connected in and see what happens. So next we fill up the system with water. I don't think I really need to show you too much of a video about that but two ends of the system fill it up with water. Okay so now we've got a pump I'm going to connect on. I'm going to connect on an end and then at this end I put on a, a T-piece so that we can now can grab that end and we can go in there and then we're also just going to use this end um, we're going to use this end just to be able to top up the system a bit as well. So I've fashioned a very very simple header tank for the solar array. I'm going to put a bit of water in this box at the top. You can see that by the end the water will flow down into the T-piece and the T-piece then connects into the solar array and then there's the solar pump, right? So the thinking being that the water will circulate around and effectively this just adds uh, to make sure that the one, there's always water in the system and I can't imagine for a second it's going to be much in the way of pressure but there's a tiny, tiny bit of an expansion vessel there as well if it was needed. So we fill up the top header tank and then we switch everything on and now we're effectively we're just pushing water through the system and bleeding out any air and you can see it bubbling up inside that tank there so there's just some few air bubbles that are inside the system that are trapped that are making their way out 
Once we've done that, system runs and it's all nice and quiet and water is now starting to circulate. So we've attached the temperature probe, that's just got a bit of insulation tape on it, you just see there's a little bit of water running through there, so I'm just going to give that all a, a bit of a tighten up, make sure everything's okay, and then I've just got a bit of insulation, I'm just going to stick that on just to sort of shield the, the temperature probe a little bit, it's not going to make an awful lot of difference, but um, that will just stop some of the ambient air chilling everything off, so let's get that on, and then we're good to go, let's make some measurements. So here we are, this is the system outside, a couple of panels that are linking into the garage and then into that um, hot water pump. Just coming out here to check for leaks. Um, when I first came out a few minutes ago, you can see down there that there obviously was a leak inside the system. And actually it turns out that it was actually this junction over here. So I've just got put a couple of spanners in that and tightened it up. If we look over the joints, everything's okay and the system is now running. Um, can't really hear because it's too much wind. Um, but the air seems to be coming out of the system, so there's not much in the way of water noise at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic. So, we're running. With water as the heat transfer medium running through the solar array, we have a much better heat transfer. Sun's coming up just after 6.30 and we can see the heat pipe heating up nicely. Thereafter, the green line, which is the array, there's a slight lag as it starts to warm up and then obviously the heat then gets transferred through the water, back through the hoses and into garage, which is the orange line. If you remember with the air system, we were getting up to around about 18 degrees. Here we're getting up to around 26, 27 degrees, so water is definitely working better. Please remember this is a closed system, so as the water circulates, it's just going to keep on warming up until it tops out. And I guess we're seeing that around about 26 degrees at the moment. So the next step is to build a bigger array and see if we can get some more heat.